Well, anyway, lads, this is the Northman that we talk about here today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it came out a while ago, but we all liked it so much that uh, we thought we'd talk about it because we're, we're not just a bunch of hate people. No, <laughs> no. the last couple videos, people probably think we're hating on everything. No, no, we're not going to hate on everything. No. <laughs> Tell people to stop making bad movies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're not like that, but uh, all in all, uh, uh, Robert Eggers is a damn genius, the man he is. Yeah, uh, no, the way how we played out the story and made it to where it was factually accurate, and you didn't realize that it was going completely left yeah, mm. until it got too close to the end no, you for you to ball. catch up, that... It, it was it was great. You just had to stay a part of the movie the entire time. That's right. right. This is not one you need to get up and go to the bathroom a lot. You need to watch it the whole way. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also I think what makes it so good is uh, the fact that it's Viking Hamlet, basically. <laughs> the, right. That's pretty much what it is at yeah. the end of the day. But the historical accuracy and like uh, the source material accuracy to like Norse paganism and stuff like that. Uh, all in all. Uh, very, very uh, accurate. Very, very uh, well done, well received. Um, uh, I guess we could jump right into uh, uh, the summary of this. So I guess it starts off on this uh, this island where uh, uh, this little prince is uh, happy that his dad's coming home from a raid, and he's got a bunch of treasures. And yet he's got he's got slaves with him. He he does have slaves with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's a big um, that's a big footnote in this movie. Um, and uh, I guess when he gets home, um, immediately people want to, uh, uh, well, he wants to have this, like, kind of rite of passage with his son. So he kind of takes him to have, like, this ritual. Now, we were all watching it in the movie theater. Elijah, you did have a bit of a reaction to this. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> right. th- th- that part of the movie, when they were doing the ritual, the way how they shot the camera angles and used a fog machine probably and had you feeling like you were the boy just seeing your father's face and then the priest's face and then all of a sudden the camera turns back on the boy and you're like wait I was the boy it, it you feel like you're going through the process with them and you feel like you're on a trip mm. you just weren't ready for it ready and you for it. no, no, no it, there was it. no there was no like build up it was kind of like when we walk in here do exactly as I do and then it just flipped the script on every possible axis that I thought the movie was going. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, so then this is, so this has, to, it's a Norseman. It's got to be like how the prince came into power. Little did I know, the minute they stepped out from the little ceremony, him and his dad got ran up on by like six dudes on a horse. Yeah, yeah. With giant swords, hopped off. The father said, run. I'm gonna handle it. He cut. He cut up a couple dudes, but then he inevitably got stabbed. Yeah. And then held down. And this is where it got crazy, because a dude coming up in an all fur and like a fur pellet. Is that what it's called? Fur pellet. Yeah, like a pelt or something. Yeah, like a that. pelt. Yeah, and full fur it, pelt. Isn't it his brother who kills him? Yes. Yeah. His brother just comes up, yeah. takes the mask off. We all realize it's him. After they just had like a whole bonding thing happen inside the mess hall when they all came back. Yeah. Comes up and is like, finally, I get to kill you. Um, I'm going to take your girl. I'm going to take your wife and I'm going to kill your son. Any last words? And he looked at him and said, the, he, what did he say? He said something remember. real slick. I don't remember, but he did. He, did. he was like, he was like, he was like. The throne cannot. The oh no, my armband will never fit on the on the arm. Oh yeah, he's calling a, him out of a stolen throne. Yeah, because anytime the leader always wears a little like metal armband. The jarl. The jarl. Yeah, and it gets handed down from one king to another. But the king at the time was like, my band will never fit on your arm because the chip because the throne was stolen, he, and then got his head cut off like a savage. 
You, you want to you hear some crap real quick before we continue? Go How is it, it that I'm Catholic and I know a lot about North Paganism and myth and like <laughs> culture and stuff like that? Well, I mean... It's interesting. You know, it, it is. It is. In, it know, is, it is yeah. Is, I, I mean, I have looked into it a, right. a, a while ago. Dude, I was... You're saying you're worshiping it. You just... Right. No, 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 of course not. You know no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. 100%. Because when I was younger, I used to do the whole Greek mythology and the mythical animals. Oh, that was, was everybody. It was awesome. Everybody. Mm. And then I got into the actual, like, real Greek, like, the Greek mythology of the gods, and I was like, oh, this is fucked. Yeah, it is. Right. Uh. But, yeah, no, so then uh, the kid, sudden... Kid escapes. Yeah, kid runs off, um, hides behind a rock instead of keep running because he looks back, uh, sees his dad's head get cut off, and then the brother, who is now the king, tells one of his men, hey, uh, the boy can't live. So I need I need y'all to go after him. Yeah, they go after him. One dude catches him. The kid grabs a grabs a dagger that his father gave him, and slices homie's nose clean off. Mm. And jumps that. over the edge of a cliff into some water. The dude with his nose cut off assumes that he's dead. Goes back, nose gone. Is like, did the job get done? He was like, yeah, the boy. Is no longer here. Yeah, he's a liar, though. So, the uncle, a.k.a. King, assumes he has completely uh, ended his brother's bloodline. And now there's no one to stand against him. Mm. And that is where the movie actually turns into almost like a chapter book where it just ends. Yeah. And then you get a title screen explaining the next scene that's going to happen. And honestly, looking back... It seems almost as if it was like an act one, act two, and an act three. Yeah. Just like in the play Hamlet. But when you're watching the movie, you don't realize it because none of that is going through your head because you're just like, oh, Viking age. You want to own the you want to own the kingdom? You got to kill the king. Mm. Happens to be your brother. He was first in line. Fuck it. Chop him up. <laughs> right. You know what right. I mean? So your head's not going, oh, it's act two. Let's... But they See, divide it up like that. Yeah, so but sort of that was the good reminds you that it's act one, two, and three. Yeah, right. Just but like they a just, play. Yeah. However, when you're watching that movie, you're not you're, not, you're not thinking that it's a play no. or it's any so, form of another play. This is the thing that I gotta say. The most respect I have for this movie is the fact that it is brutally honest when oh, it comes God. to historical accuracy. Right. It is not afraid. To show you any of the dark stuff that happens. Well, Dan, the do you want do you want to yeah. talk about Act Two then? Yeah, we we'll talk about Act Two because <laughs> <laughs> that's where it all goes down. This man, yeah, yeah that's where the action really now. starts. The action really starts. Yeah, that's act right. Two. Go for it. All right, so uh, immediately, so the kid uh, who escaped now all of a sudden he's with another <laughs> Viking clan, and not only is he uh, within this clan, he's a berserker. Now, I believe the Berserkers are like, what, the, the best warriors? Right? They are the strongest warriors that can be taken over yeah. by one of their god spirit animals. Usually a wolf or a bear. They eat a mushroom. Yeah, yeah. Do a chant to the god, and then they're in the battle. Invincible. Cuts don't hurt them. Getting stabbed. High jumps. Yeah, they, it's almost like they become inhuman. Yeah, almost. and they and they go on forces. this. Yeah. special forces. That's Got, right. The special forces. Hey, <laughs> hey, listen, Barry, you grab. Listen, you grab a That's spear. That's an inside joke, everybody. <laughs> inside joke. Barry, you grab a spear out of the air, catch it, and just do a three sixty and hit the first dude you see. Yeah. Nah, you special Before forces. Before you hit the ground. You right. You special forces. Right, right, you special right, forces right, right. at the end Man. of the day. Man. They go on a raid and let me tell you, they just massacre everybody. It is brutal. Uh, so if you're somebody who like historical accuracy, nobody tap dances around shit. Yeah, this movie you, is not for children, by the way. You're definitely going to like right. this. Right? This this movie is not for children. No, not at all. I believe, this I mean, is, it's like the Vikings are. TV show ramped up to 10. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. taken to the extreme. Yeah, if you like Vikings, if you like Last Kingdom on Netflix, you will love this movie. But it's the, the action and the violence is wrapped up to 10. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so they go on a raid. Uh, they're, they're, they're cutting people's heads off and stuff, uh, taking prisoners, slaves, uh, selling them off, uh, burning people in the inside the houses. Uh, if you're somebody who doesn't like that, you're probably not going to like this movie, but still. Right. <laughs> right. That is what people do uh, back then. Right. Uh, people were very, very cruel to one another. Mm -hmm. So uh, at one point, um, what he, he gets the realization that uh, his uncle, who he's supposed to kill, 
is no, he's no longer a king. He's a farmer, right? So it's clear to say he probably wasn't that good of a king after uh, he le- uh, the kid left, our main character left. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So he goes to... Um, so what happens is he, uh, believe it or not, he leaves his clan. He disguises himself as a slave, and they all get shipped off to this farm where he will now begin his um, uh, quest to kill uh, his uncle and avenge his father and free his mother. And at that point, that's where things start to get <laughs> a little interesting. That's where start with the, uh, uh, the um, religious side starts to kick in a little bit more. Uh, he starts having visions for, about uh, Odin. Uh, what Am I missing anybody else? Um, Valkyrie, I think, too. Yeah, he talked to a Valkyrie and saw visions. Because ever since he had left, and he said started saying the chant. Yeah. It was as you said as you said before. It was after they raided people. They divided up the women and children, killed all the men, picked out the pretty ones, whatever. Yeah. Afterwards, it became nightfall. He was he felt something pulling him towards the towards the old church that they had burned down. Oh yeah. And when he went in, that's when he saw the priestess. That had the beads over her eyes and everything. Right. It was telling them, like, you have to go back and finish what you started, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I did skip that part, yeah. No, you're good. Um, <sighs> and then he snuck out and went in, went undercover as a slave. Then he went back, landed on the farm. Mm. I do enjoy the fact that... The visions that he saw were of a, a, myth, a mythological god in their sense. Yeah, it adds to the It realism. wasn't just like, oh, ooh, like, no, they showed the priestess. Right. Showed the, showed the last tear. We, we, I, we totally forgot that part. Mm. Um, but, you know, did the whole process of like Odin, the Tree of Kings, like did all that. They, they did that part right. Mm. They did. And then when he went back, I don't know how he snuck the sword back with him. That was impressive. Mm. Right. And he's like special forces, like we said. Yeah, he's special forces. Yeah, I don't know how he did that. I don't know. He went from like this uh, very, very privileged prince who gets everything handed to him to somebody who knows how to handle himself and handle the world. Right. Which is impressive. And I think the way how he was first brought into his dad's or his son's thing mm. before he just became a farmer and his son like took over or whatever. Yeah. The son was going through all the slaves that they had brought back from the raid mm. and they were um what's it called? They were he was seeing who could fight because mm. he needed soldiers and he ran across him and got his ass beat. Yeah. The 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 brother the uncle, his son got his ass beat by. He has um, a lot of sons at this point. He right. does. Homie been homie been getting to work. He been busy. <laughs> yes, All right. busy. This man this man did not know what a full moon looked like. Um, can pull out of a parking space. D- <laughs> Boy, he didn't have parking space back like then, but. Bro, a parking space, homie. He couldn't. He could not back up a cow. Could back up a cow. All right. This mm. man was in the most calm and fetal state possible. Like, he, he, he looked like a dude that was content with his son taking over the kingdom. Him just being a cool farmer with his wife. And all of his kids just running shit for him. Yeah. Little did he know, the son that was not supposed to live, um, yeah, he got a number for that ass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he killed the right. son. And then... The scene ended. Yeah. Right. And now chapter three. Yeah. Or act three. So uh, at what, at this point, like, um, what, they're going to meet, like, another farming community or whatever, and it's like, uh, they make all the slaves play, like, uh, some game or something like that, some Norse ancient game. Yep. And uh, at this point, uh, one of uh, the uncle's uh, kids is uh, such a stuck-up brat and doesn't want to lose uh, so he runs out onto the field. Uh, one of the uh, opposing community slaves nearly almost kills the kid with blunt force. 
Right. But uh, our homeboy main character. What, what, what is this guy's name? I was name Scar Scar. Scar Scar? Yeah. Okay. Well, Scar Scar uh, beats the crap out of the slave saving the kid. And at that point, uh, they give him more privileges. I guess he's a leader now. Uh, now I guess he's basically kind of like the manager yeah. of, of the farm now. Right. He uh, essentially worked his way up the food chain just so he could get a little bit more trust. Get just so he could get to his uncle's like basically right hand man mm. and stab him in the back. Yeah. And uh, at this point, he does have a bit of a romantic relations with uh, somebody else, another slave. Uh, yes. I believe she's from the village that he actually raided. <laughs> so a uh, little, little, little uh, strange how they went with that. But, you know, hey, if it works, it works. Well, I mean, it, they, Edgar's wrote it perfectly is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Uh, it's not like something where, like out of Ant-Man where all of a sudden the mood just changes out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. yeah, no, everything had a purpose. And then he took a group of the people that wanted to get out of the slavery, put them on a ship, and sent them away. That's right. Including his wife. And then he realized, if I run, they're just going to come after me. Yeah. So he jumped the ship, went back, and then just went straight up. Rambo, yeah, just right. start killing everybody, right. free and slaves. He took, he he took, he, 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 he was Rambo. He was, Rambo. he was Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Right. He listen. He he took. He he ate that mushroom. Did his war chant. Ran through and murdered everybody. That's right. Everybody that wasn't a slave. You were getting murdered. The That's sun right. got. Didn't he cut the dude's head off? And then, yeah, that was a quick one too. Yeah. He oh, he, he didn't even think twice about right. it. Yeah. Cut him, cut his head off, clean off, and just left him there. Uh, all right. Well, final act, right, comes after the whole farm is basically burnt to the ground, and uh, all his sons are dead, uh, inclu- including his wife is dead. His mom is dead. No, wait. We got to talk about that part. That's important. That's the twist. Yeah, that's yeah. that. That's the important part. That, after that, he cuts was, off the son's head. That yeah, we forgot to mention that part. After he cuts off the son's head, he gets to the house that his uncle and his mom live in. Yeah. He goes in the back door and sees his mother. His mother sees him and is wondering why he is there. She plays nice and then confirms the fact that she never wanted him to be born. Yeah. And that she ordered the hit on him because she didn't want anything to do with him. And what does this man do? Slice her wide open from the wide hip to the shoulder. Open. Oh, my gosh. He didn't have a single tear in his eye. None. And sliced her. I mean, might as well. You, you, what? You oh don't my love you. Gosh. Listen, he killed the son and the mother. The only yeah. one he had left was the father, and he left both of the bodies exactly where he found them. Yeah. And then told him, you can find me at the mountain. Yeah, uh, the volcano. Or the volcano. smoke come to the mountain, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want smoke, smoke? Pull up. Pull up. Uh, well, uh, so they go to the, the, the final chapter. They meet at the volcano, which is known as uh, Hell, which is spelled uh, H-E-1-L, not like the Christian spelling or the Abrahamic spelling. Yeah, this, uh, is, this, this is the... Uh, yeah, this, this is... Norse uh, mythology. Yeah. So uh, they go there, and they have their fight. Um... And it is brutal. I mean, uh, main character homeboy, Scar Scar, gets his arm broken, yet still manages to what? Does he does he slit his throat? Does he stab him? Does he cut off his head? What happened? He stabs him. He stabs him. Stabs him clean through the chest. Yeah, nobody falls in lava, surprisingly. Uh, but I think they fight, what, um, just like their underwear are, and they fight naked yep. or something like Basically, that. Basically, because it's so hot. Yeah. It's so hot, you... It you, reminds you, have, you, you. You can't. You still, you're gonna fucking pass out. Yeah, right. you gonna pass out. It Losing. reminds you of what um, that Star Wars, whichever one, where Anakin and them were fighting in that lava pit. I yeah, have the yeah. high ground, Anakin. That that, it, it, that scene reminded me of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But a better fight scene. Indeed. <laughs> uh, so then I ha- he wins, and then he gets uh, one final vision from uh, the Norse uh, gods, where uh, I guess um, the slave who he hooked up with. Uh, she gives birth to twins, and I guess they become like a monarch over a clan or something. And a Valkyrie carries him to Valhalla. 
and so, that is the end. Uh, right, right. That's the end. Uh, things I want to touch on. Uh, definitely a great movie. Everybody should watch it. The yes. cinematography was great. They oh, actually filmed in Iceland. Iceland is a great area. That's one of my countries I want to go on my bucket list. You know, mm. it's a great, beautiful area. Um, a lot of people are Viking descent in that area. From what I've seen on TV, they have beautiful women in Iceland. Some of the most beautiful women in the world. Mm-hmm. From what I've seen um, in Iceland, that's one place I definitely want to visit on my bucket list. The fight scenes were awesome. Fight scenes were super great. I mean, they choreography choreograph was great. It wasn't like you can see where they were pulling punches or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm big on watching fight scenes and stuff because I'm watch movies ever since I was a kid. You saw them down. Martial artists and everything. I, like me, I always like to see a good fight scene. Nothing that's like oh, yeah, on you a can soap always, opera. You can always tell when it's a fake fight scene. You can scene. always tell it's a fake fight. This stuff yeah. look, look absolutely real. And uh, Alexander Skarsgård, he's one of my favorite actors. He was in True Blood. He played <clears> Eric <throat> in True Blood. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that, that, that show before, but it's a great TV show. He plays one of the main vampires in True Blood. Uh, but this role was absolutely made for him. He... he He's sort of that Nordic descent, that Scandinavian type of person. So this he acts, he fits that role perfectly. And I just want to, uh, this movie was just great as far as the cinematic view of it and as far as the fight scenes and everything. The acting was great. Everybody was a great actor and actress on this movie. It was pretty great. Mm. I de- definitely recommend, uh, if you don't have anything to do, watch this movie. It's a great movie to watch. Yeah, I agree. Uh, in terms of, uh, I guess we just recently heard some people uh, criticize uh, Edgar's films as saying like it's uh, too hard to follow and stuff like that. I don't see where they're coming from. I th- that movie was very simple to follow. Right. Like, okay, that, so like with that, with that being a thing, right? Yeah. At what point do you did you guys realize that it was Hamlet? Uh, like, at what part of the movie were you like, wait a minute, everything up to now is Hamlet? Probably when it got to the farm. That's probably. Probably, uh, excuse me. That's probably for me. That's when. Uh, that's probably when we figured it out. For me, I don't know about y'all. Yeah, it. For me, it was probably a little bit past that before I figured it out. That it was sort of like a, um, a twist on Hamlet a little. Yeah. Uh, but I, don't, I mean, it's okay that he took inspiration from. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Of course, because he still made it his own. He, he made, made own. it. He right. made it his own movie. It's, Right. It's not like, oh, yeah. It's not. So, like, he did essentially what Lion King did when, at least when I was a kid. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The way how they made Lion King, Hamlet, without really telling you, like, hey, this is the movie Hamlet. Right. And then I found out later on, it's the movie. Like, the way how they did it to where you're not thinking about it until you learn about it is mean that anyone can enjoy the movie. Right. Regardless of. Whatever the education or bullshit you have. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, every level of person can understand the movie. Yes. And watch it and enjoy it without having to think anything of it. Right. It's not a deep thought movie. Ah, oh, the twist was great. I didn't see that twist coming Man. at all. <coughs> Did not see that twist coming And at it all. was so early in the movie, too. Yeah. They about, just came in celebrating. Not talking about, about the last twist. Not the first one. The, the second one with the mother. Oh, that one was crazy. That was a hairpin turn. It was like, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm sorry. You what? You're an awful person. Yeah. But the first one where the dude took the mask off and it's the brother. We're like, we just saw you we partying together. Just saw together. you partying, yeah. right? Talking about your son and how you love him and how like they, they, they we're a loving family, right? All together as a. I was like, oh, you just walk up. So how does it feel, brother? While you got three of your homeboys with. Long Thor's. ass beards in your in your brother, right? Yeah, right. and you just go walk and be like, "So, I see it's finally over." Like, what? That's cold. That's cold. Yeah, it is it's cold. You you twisted human being for that, right? People wanted that king throne so bad back in the day. Yeah, but that, listen, these were Vikings. <laughs> yeah, these were Vikings. Yeah, yeah, that's what they did. That's what that's they did what back they in did. the day. You know, that's right. But that's why it was such a good movie historical wise. Because if right. you're into that kind of like history. And you like looking into that stuff and watching movies about it. Right. Or TV shows, like Vikings and the TV show. Right. That movie did such a good job that you won't even realize what it is until probably like we all realized way too late. Way too late. We're not even we're not even thinking like that because we're just like, oh, this is a great Viking movie. Right. They're doing everything right. The picture's crazy. Right. The fight scenes are amazing. 
Yeah, right. a lot of uh, Robert Eggers' films I've always enjoyed. I've been uh, following him ever since I saw uh, The Witch, uh, which again is a surprising movie uh, when you meet somebody like me. But all in all, I, it looked good, so I just I gave it a shot, and I give credit where credit's due. Uh, he did a great job also with uh, The Lighthouse. Uh, he turned uh, Pretty Boy uh, from Twilight. What's his name? Uh, Robert Pattinson. Pattinson, yeah, yeah, turned him into a psychopath. What? So I mean, like he he's pretty good. I think a lot of people in Hollywood, especially in freaking Marvel and DC, need to we're not talking about t- t- take. <laughs> we're not going to talk about them, right. but they need to take a lesson out of his book because he definitely knows how to write and what's important to a story, and right. which I think the, number one big thing source material. They got to be oh, loyal to gosh. that. Oh Lord. He was loyal to Do your to research, because you're yeah. going to piss somebody off. Like, there's a lot of military movies. Right, yeah. Military dudes, just, just like, I don't watch them anymore. Yeah. Why? Yeah. They get so much wrong. Yeah, the gun shoot forever with ammunition, stuff right. like that. Right, right. The ranks are wrong on a uniform. Yeah, yeah. I'm a stickler for that. Why is a corporal telling a sergeant what to do? Right, you know, exactly. Stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, but all in all, he does his research, and he knows how to write. Those are the two big things that I think Hollywood just needs to take a lesson in right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Deserves another shot for that one. Yeah, and what would you give it on your popcorn scale? Oh, without a doubt, I'm going 98. This 90%? has to, yeah, no. Right. I mean, this this is without a doubt. I mean, no movie's perfect. No. So that for I can't give it a hundred. Right. right. 98, 99. I, I I think I'm gonna stick with 98. Is definitely a well-deserved uh, ranking, in my opinion. What do y'all think? All right, so Dan gives it a 98% on his popcorn meter. What about you, Elijah? I, I, I really enjoyed it, and I think the only thing that would have made the movie better is if I didn't, I did, if it's as if it wasn't based off of the off of a play. Mm. From okay. Edgar Allan Poe. It okay. was like Carolina era play type style. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. I, so I give it, I'll give it a 99. That was a great freaking movie. I loved every second of it. Yeah. I watched it twice and I loved it both times. Yeah. I plan yeah. on watching it again. I was going to watch it before we did this review again, but I didn't get a chance <coughs> to. Uh, but I definitely give it, I'm like Dan, I give it a 98% on my popcorn meter. Definitely a great movie. Uh, if you like Last Kingdom, Vikings. Those TV shows, you would definitely like this one. I say that again. Yeah, uh, it's something that uh, you really need to check out. Yeah. Well, guys, is that a wrap? That's a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap. Man. That All movie right. got high scores. Pass the pizza. <laughs>